two fish swim into a concrete wall. The one turns to the other and says, Damn. You are watching Jupiter at night. What you may not know is that it's only being hosted by two men. That's true. One of them is Brian. That's me. The other one... Well, I'm Chris. Hey there, Brian. That's you. Yeah, uh... You'll notice <clears throat> that the other two jerkwads, who are often here with us... Yeah. Are, wait a minute. What's the word I'm looking for? I Well, I think... Not here with yeah, us. Yeah, just not is, present, is, I was going to say. What I, yeah, not present at all. But you know, Brian, I couldn't afford... Not at all! At, Brian, on a moral level, I couldn't... I just, I just kidding, guys. I couldn't afford not to be here. I mean, we have so many things to talk about in tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night that uh, I just thought, you know, this and you and I just be a one-on-one. -on -one yeah. Real, real We have to power intimate, through it. non-homo kind of way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the audience in on a little something. Okay, go. We have very little for tonight's oh, show. Oh, come on now, Brian. We have very, a lot. Very, very little. I, 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 can't, I can't express this enough. No, no, in no. Fact, in no, fact, no, no. in fact, hold on. No. Okay, go ahead. I can talk about my beer. I'm oh, drinking wait. a beer. Oh, wait, what, are you, what beer are you No, it's the same beer I was drinking last it's week. It's the same one as last week. <laughs> but I can talk wait, about... Wait, wait, wait. Okay. It's my turn to talk about how awesome the show is. All right. We, we, every week, we pull together the news stories. The best news stories. The stuff we really get pumped about as nerds. In yeah, fact, that's true. the news docket is so exciting this week that literally one of the top news item, top Top news items, like number two on the list of things we should talk about, begins with the two words, Jody Foster. Okay, that's true. But <laughs> So that just tells you how amazing this see. show is bound to be. Let's see what kind of mileage we can get out of this bad man. Hey, let's, let's talk about general geek news I, right hey, now. Hey, we shouldn't forget that we're... We we got the we got the moving picture happy fun mutual time. Oh yeah, moving picture uh, happy fun mutual time for the Mercury Men, well, yeah. the the Siffy original web series uh, is going to be talking about at the end of the show. So if you if you don't want spoilers, tune out then. If you want to hey, watch it, watch it now. You know what we need to start back, doing too, Is we need to start taking suggestions from the chat room or something for what our, well, we want to watch. We didn't that. even think about that before we hit record. So. I don't even know. We'll All right, chat room, start I have telling us what we should talk about. Uh, you know, watch for the next moving picture happy fun mutual time, and we'll we'll figure it out before. before before we talk about the Mercury Men. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, we'll just yeah, okay. do it live. All yeah. right, and to mix things up, I'm going to say we move the Jodie Foster news up to the first slot. Yeah, you want to... Let's just kick the show off with Jodie Foster because it's the best. Now, uh, were you a fan of her movie Contact? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Well, neither yeah. was I. You know what I did like, though? Um, uh, Gary Busey has a son. His son is in contact and looks batshit crazy, just like Gary Busey. And I loved that. He was the guy that, that uh, sabotaged the place. The, the, uh, the first spinny wheel yeah, in yeah. contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy looking mm -hmm, guy. Mm -hmm. Gary Busey's kid. Mm -hmm. Awesome, right? Well, so... Uh, I think he's Gary Busey. Yeah, Jake Busey. Yeah. yeah I awesome. believe that Jodie Foster awesome. was, was drawn, Brian. I believe that she was pulled into a love and a passion for space. And the search for life in space. And do you recall that they were shutting down the SETI project? Nope. You didn't know that? Nope. Dude, do you, well, so you know about the SETI project. And you're, you, all, you love the SETI project, I love the right? SETI yeah. project. SETI project lets you search for radio signals from outer space from home, sort of in a sh distributed computing system. And the, fun, the funding just wasn't there. They just had to shut it down. Congress hasn't been able to get the crap together. Yeah. One of the many casualties of our economy. And uh, so they were only shy, like, a few mil, though. Really? And so, well, I don't know exactly. Uh, Jodie Foster uh, raised uh, uh, $223,000 with the help of Jodie Foster, which exceeded the $200,000 they needed. Uh, they, so that should keep going. To get them in some sort of, in, in a limited, more limited capacity, but yeah. Can, now, first off, that's awesome. Yeah, congrats to, look way, at. Way to go, Jody. Yeah. Because you know what? You are three times cooler now than I ever thought you were. Yeah. You're awesome. Yeah. I love you, Jody. Uh, second of all, literally, if you're the governments of the world and you're like, oh, a couple million bucks in order to find what might be the yeah, most important discovery in humanity. No, nah, I just can't do it. Right. But you know what we can do? What we can do, Chris, 
we can spend literally millions of dollars on litigation between government agencies to talk about building different kinds of roads that aren't necessarily important can I, and are not aliens from other planets. Can I can I give you a pop? Don't, don't look at the don't look at the article because it'll give it away. Don't look. Don't look. Uh, I'm not gonna look. I want to ask I you a pop look. quiz. I don't read anyway. Uh, what year do you suppose the SETI Institute was founded? Let's search for extraterrestrial life. 1984. Can you believe it's that is old? It really? Yeah, it really is Plus, that old. Ironic, also. Why is that? I don't know. Okay. Well, there you go. So thanks to Jody Foster, uh, SETI continues. Well, hey, way to go, Jody Foster. That was probably that's, honestly that's our, that was our least compelling story we just opened with. That was though. the least compelling one. I think so. Really? Because uh, all right, uh, you know what, audience? I want you guys to tell us what's the least compelling story because uh, I'm going to say that we're only going down from here. No, 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 no. Look at this. <laughs> this, this, this. No. Oh, come on. This, come on now. Armageddon scientists plan to deflect Earthbound asteroids. This is a real thing they're going to go try. It's not like Armageddon where they're going to go land on it and drop a nuke. No. But they're actually going to. Which gonna, means it's not cool. They're going to experiment with uh, shooting at rocks. So. Dude, don't you care about that? I totally do. I'm just joshing with you. It's hey, awesome. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted the whole show to go downhill. Like, I was rooting for it, you know? Like, I know, I, man, but... I started out, and I'm like, let's start with Jodie Foster, and let's do this whole thing where we just get worse and worse. Like, later on, I kid you not, one of the things we're talking about is a new Austin Powers movie. Like, we're just going downhill Didn't you put here. that one in there? I totally did. So why are you talking on it? I'm telling you, I'm trying to destroy us right now. I don't understand. Obviously, but no, this is awesome. That seems bad. Backwards. What's really cool <laughs> is this is like scientists acting like six-year-old kids. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, they're like they're like literally practicing firing at rocks. Well, and it's I, like they're going out in the backyard with like they're like cap gun and they're just like shooting at things. Dude, whenever NASA, awesome. whenever NASA can take scientific cues from from historic movies like Armageddon, s featuring the Bruce Willis, uh, I, I just think that's probably a good cue. You know, art inspiring science, those kinds of things. Art inspiring science. That's yeah. right, because there is no way we would ever try to protect our planet from asteroids about to destroy us all if it were for Bruce Willis movies made very badly yeah, yeah. with Steven Tyler's daughter. There you go. So and Ben Affleck. All right. Well, let's move on to TV news. Okay. Because I want to talk about TV news. All right. So uh, Babylon Five. Now, before we get into this, I want to say one of the reasons I think this made it in the rundown is this is this new story that came from the lips of Walter Koenig. Koenig? Koenig? I don't know. Koenig? Chekhov. Koenig. Chekhov, right? Yeah, Chekhov. And uh And uh, that's so, A, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And we have, a ch we've, me, you and I have met Walter in person. Yeah, we met him. We should tell that story. At the Space Needle. We should tell that story. We so, should. So Star Trek is now 40 years old, right? No. No. 45? Chat room, yeah, is it 45? So we 45 were there for the 40th. We were there for the 40th anniversary, and they had a 40th anniversary bash at the, at the Space Needle in Seattle. And it was... Awesome. It was rad. I mean, we, we went down, and uh, for those of you who don't know the Space Needle, there's this thing next to it called the Experience Music Project. It's just this funky, crazy-shaped yeah. building that supposedly, if you're in, like, a helicopter and you look at it from the right angle from way above, looks like a guitar, but when you're just, like, down on the street, it looks, know, like, it looks like a giant booger. It looks like a giant, yeah, like, shiny, multicolored, techno-looking booger. But it's an awesome building, and, and it's also a sci-fi museum and everything. It's great. So, Dude, right the sci-fi museum is no joke. That's really... It's not even just, like, yeah. inside it. And, the and they have an original series, Captain's Chair, sitting in there that you can yeah. like, look at, and it's, it's totally rad. So we went down there. We we got to check it out. We got to meet Walter Koenig, Nichelle Nichols. Um, uh, we got to live George Decay. George Decay. Oh my gosh! I got to talk to George Decay. That was awesome. Yeah. And it was rad. It was totally rad. Riker was there, and he seemed like Troy was there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so rad. so he was at a convention recently. And he was talking about Battlestar Galactica because he also played a role. Did you ever watch BSG? Not Battlestar Galactica, was he? It was talking or about not Battlestar, uh, Babylon, Babylon 5. Five. Yeah, yeah. Babylon um, Five is pimp. I love Babylon I Five. Know. Yeah. So you do, so you watch it. So Absolutely. he he plays a psychic. He devoured every minute of that. Show. Did you really? Yeah, I love Babylon Five. I had no 5. idea. I've never. I've, Dude, I've watched season one. That's my joint, fool. I could not. Get, what does that mean? I don't know, but like. Filmmakers who are really hip and black use that a lot. They're like, well, this is my joint, dog. Well, and I'm like, well, I want that. Is it? Is it like, okay, so let's say I didn't like season one. And let's say and I... And that would be not your joint. Okay, okay. Because yeah. you like season one? I gotta watch it again. It I got think. better. I all gotta watch it again. To be fair, the first couple of episodes of Babylon Five of the B Five, the B Five, is, known, yeah, is the not is is kind of uh, it kind of lumbers along and kind of like is like a little bit of like sub FT says season three is when it gets good. 
I, I like season two also, uh, and I felt like near the end of season one, it started getting really good. But honestly, I gotta try it again. So yeah. maybe maybe eventually we should make it a watch along. But you gotta watch season one. You All can't right. skip any. All right. Yeah. Uh, so he played a psychic sure. in there, and I saw some yeah. of his scenes. He was pretty good. Yeah, he was all right. Here's what he says. He says that uh, the, the main dude that ran it, uh, I can't, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, I think it's like uh, the creator was Michael Strazowski. Yeah. He says Strzynski. that, whatever, he's in negotiations to reacquire the rights to Babylon 5. <laughs> The president is what uh, Oblama or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Osama. Uh, so he says Osama Oblama. It doesn't matter. He says that he's in the he's in the process, and it looks like things are proceeding well to reacquire the rights to the original creator of Babylon Five. Awesome. And with the intention of making a new series or a new movie, something like that. Now, are they talking about just continuing from where it left off, or like uh, the, reboot? We didn't give any details on that. But it would but, be great. Yeah. It would be really cool to see. I, I really dug it. Now, what's really cool, and a lot of people don't know about the, about uh, Chekhov, there is <laughs> Koenig is actually a pretty decent writer. Um, yeah, he's written for a lot of sci-fi stuff. In fact, he wrote. Uh, he was one of the uh, writers on the original season of Land of the Lost, which was pretty awesome. Mm. Um, in fact, I think he also wrote some of Star Trek: The Animated Series. I was going to say he did. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure. So he's pretty cool. And he's uh, he he. I liked his character. His and he's character really short. Yeah, and that's great. His character is one of the more complex characters in Babylon Five, at least from the what I'd seen. It seemed like <laughs> not co- okay, not complex. That's not right. More interesting for me. Shortest. More. More inter- yeah, definitely not as tall as a lot of. He the was other the characters. most interesting for me as a Star Trek fan. I guess I should put it that way. Yeah, because you like Chekhov. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's what made me watch a little bit of Babylon Five later Is on. Got you into it a little bit. Honestly, it's worth it. I it's started totally watching that. and I was like, we oh, this is. I, I was kind of like, I, oh, I kind of like this. And then so I so I went back to season one. Oh. And gotcha. then I went off the rails. And the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. But you know, you know, one of those things. It's just like, well, well, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what do you think about? Uh, should we jump over to movies? Because our movie news time. Uh, oh, wait, about the, what's the Kill Hitler thing? Oh yeah, TV time. Uh, yeah. Let's kill Hitler. Uh, we just have a link in there for you to check some of these videos out. Go, go watch them over at Ain't It Cool. Basically, they've just got some little Doctor bit of Who's previews he's. for the returning Doctor Who, which is coming back. Toot sweet, uh, and it is very exciting because. If you remember, they're in a mid-season break on Doctor Who right now. The current season was really great. And they, when they ended the last episode before the mid-season break, they throw this big thing up that was, Doctor Who will return in Let's Kill Hitler. Have no, one of them paper just, towels over there, would you? I'm spilling beer. No worries. Here, just have a whole thing. Okay, thanks, B-Man. So that was pretty cool because, of course, everyone wants to kill Hitler because why wouldn't you? He's German. Yo, so, um, what? No. I was not inaccurate about anything I just said. Why wouldn't you, period, he's German, period. They were not related topics. I, I'm not saying you want to kill him because okay. he's German, but I'm like, everyone wants to kill Hitler. Why wouldn't you, he's German? I don't follow. Well, the, you, do you want to kill Hitler? Um, um, Why wouldn't you? Well, it's, it's I, I, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, but if he was alive, right? Oh, well, sure, yeah. Okay, now, is he German? I don't know. <laughs> Hey, you're ruining everything for me tonight. <laughs> all right, all right. So anyway, go check out the videos. You know, it's only going to be really interested if you're into Doctor Who. And if you're not into Doctor Who, you shouldn't be watching the show. Now, Stop watching right here's now. what I will say. Doctor Who's red. Um, I, 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 really, I really have got to get my butt in the gear with Doctor The chat Who. room just gave me a plus one racism stat. <laughs> Nice. That's fantastic. I also like the chat room's impl- implication that I'll be somehow editing this episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to happen. No. no. Uh, now, we've got some movie stuff yeah, to talk about. we've got a little movie news. One thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, now, you like Blade Runner? I did. You like Blade Runner? Okay. We did it as a watch along, but I don't think you were. I think I you were in, here for that one. That was when you were in California. <laughs> That's when I was in California. But, of course, everyone's seen Blade Runner like yep. a million times. Yep. It's, it's a good movie. <gasps> Regardless of which edition you watch, and there's like 17 editions of Blade Runner. We picked the, we just, just to have something new, we picked, yeah, we picked the latest cut. The latest and greatest. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so Ridley Scott, the director of the original Blade Runner, has kind of got the rights together, and he's moving ahead on making a Blade Runner related movie. So he's like, kind of like returning to his roots, like, you know, one of his big all-time classics. He's not going to reboot the movie. He's not making necessarily a sequel, but he's going to make a Blade Runner universe film so what? that will come place either take place either before really? the Blade Runner movie or after the Blade Runner movie. I think this is a great idea because from the headline, I kind of got the implication he might be rebooting Blade Runner or redoing it, and I thought that was a terrible no, idea. No, 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 no. The, the, the headline says new version of seminal sci-fi film Blade Runner. That's totally misleading. What's yeah. really happening is he's making a Blade Runner movie. 
not he's making Blade Runner. So he's making something that just exists in that world. Right. Oh, that's... it might be a sequel. It might be a prequel. It might just be a movie in that. Do you universe. love this? I'm okay with it. Well, how much do you love it if it's just something completely unrelated, just in the universe? That to me seems a lot better like, than a sequel or a prequel. I like that better than than if it's a sequel or a prequel. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that you could almost have like that could be cool. You could have a whole series of movies that take place in that universe. And boy, that world. I mean, one of my biggest impressions when I watched Blade Runner for again for the show is just how um, layered that whole series is, that whole movie. And when you've seen it a few times, you kind of relax and you start sort of looking around the scene and you kind of start seeing that other stuff. And you really kind of see like how much thought and detail went into every single shot. It's good. And that there's so much in that world that I would well, love to see something else take place in. I'm, I'm a big fan of Philip K. Dick in general. And I know Blade You're Runner, a fan of what? Uh, Dick. I'm a huge Dick fan. Okay. Yeah. In general. Yeah, in general. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I like all of his stuff. Okay. I like all of his stuff. Um, <laughs> but, but, I like all of his stuff, but. Yeah. You know what I'm saying here? Yeah. Um, uh, the thing is, I actually don't like Blade Runner the movie as much as I, as much as I like um, Electric Sheep. I don't. I like the. I like the written form better. And I know. I know that's kind of like douchey to say. Oh, this is the movie. Movie. It is a I, little douchey, like, but it's, tell like me why. More than the movie. Before I get judgy, tell me why. I I liked it more because honestly, I didn't. I didn't necessarily like the vibe of of the Blade Runner movie. Everybody's kind of zonked. Yeah, you know, it just it didn't feel quite right. I mean, a lot of the Philip K. Dick stuff has a lot of that going on in it, but you know, I, I don't know, like. You remember it distra it's distracting, isn't it? Now, now for me, I really found everyone's attitude to be consistently distracting for me. Yeah, and I can see how in a book. And I thought it was cool, but in a it was book, a good movie. but I in love a it. in a book, you frame it in your mind however you want it to be. Right, I think that's what it was. I read the story. Yep, I read about. Dream, Androids Dreaming of Electric yep. Sheep so many years before I saw I Blade could totally Runner. get it. And I was a kid when Blade Runner came out. It's just for some reason I hadn't seen the movie until I was a little older. And so I had this thing in my mind about what it was. And, and it, it doesn't look measure good. up. Yeah. That's how I felt when I watched uh, War of the Worlds. Um, I... You know, I heard the, the radio new one. I, well, no, just the... Just even the TV one. But yeah, the new oh, ones yeah. too. But just hearing the radio drama... Uh, first, yeah, and did. then and then visualizing that, yeah. and then and then later coming to watch it on a movie. In fact, that is I, probably the reason I even started Radio Revolver forever ago was God, because I, I just remember the impact it had on me. That in my mind, the radio drama had so much more visual richness to it. Well, I think you know, honestly, that kind of sounds douchey too. I, th I think you and I kind of are a little outside the mainstream. Maybe I think I think yeah. both of us. I prefer sitting down and listening to a lot of the radio dramas. Like uh, there yeah. are shows. Um, uh, like Carly Morris did a series of shows. I think it was in the 1940s called "I Love Adventure" and "I Love a Mystery." Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them I love are a mystery. Super. I love a mystery. Yep. And they're super cheesy, but I really enjoyed the hell out of them. And I enjoy a lot of that stuff, including you know uh, the Shadow. Yeah. And uh, the Old Lone Ranger mm -hmm. and uh, War of the Worlds. So, trying to remember so the, much the, more than the, I enjoy most TV shows. And there movies. was the British reoccurring series where they're traveling around in the solar system. I'm drawing a blank on it, but I featured for, uh, featured it for a little while on Radio Revolver, and it was like about. it was this ongoing series fun show. where they travel like from spaceship to like from planet to planet in their spaceship, yeah. and it's like that's so awesome. It was totally great. Yeah. Is it like Space 90, 1999 except for British and on the radio? But, but great. I also prefer some podcasts that are audio only because of that. Like podcasts. Yeah. Like I've downloaded some podcasts and then I listen to them audio only. And then when I actually see them in video, like this show, this show would be a better, this show is probably a better show in audio. That's why we make an audio version available of it. Because, you know, you, you just, you, you picture, you can picture anyway, you could picture two guys sitting around smoking cigars in a living room with a fireplace well, if no, you wanted to. Wait a minute. To. Wait a minute. Normally. This show is better in audio. Yeah, except for tonight, right? Tonight, <laughs> yeah, tonight buddy. This show looks good, Ding! right? Ding! Oh, Ding! bang, Ding! bangerang, pan the man. All right, let's move on. All right, all right. So AMC, we've talked about it a little bit lately because they've done all sorts. They've been all over the map. They've been doing stuff. Yeah, well, we just recently were getting upset because they kind of gave. Um a couple of shows the bone with pre uh, in order to give preference to Mad Men. Yeah, and The Walking Dead is not necessarily doing so great. And actually, Mad Men is not necessarily doing so great either. There's been some fighting going on there. And now we've got official confirmation that they have ordered the final 16-episode arc of Breaking Bad. Bum, Breaking bum, Bad bum. is going to be off the air after another 16 episodes. Not not currently, because it's currently, they've currently got a few left to air, but um, they will be going off the air. There's only going to be 16 new episodes, which may either be two eight-episode seasons well, let's be honest. or one full 16-episode season. Good show. Though. Really? 16 episodes? 
16 episodes are going to be made. And then it's done. Dude, what show hasn't gotten better when they've gotten a season to wrap it up? That's true. It could be awesome. And honestly, Breaking Bad is great. Yeah, I, I mean, mean... Do you watch it currently? No, but I, I, from what I've heard of it, it seems like a show that has a deadline like that would just, would just thrive just in that. just rock out, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of looking forward to it in that regard, but uh, I, I, I'm bummed out. Because yeah, I know what really, you mean. Because really, really, it feels like Walking Dead's on kind of thin ice. And Breaking Bad is, is, is going to be. Is angry. this an economy thing? I mean, what's I going on? I don't know because I was. These the shows are doing that really all of well. These episodes were making a serious. Well, like thing. Walking Dead has set records for AMC. Huge big time. And right? but they're still cutting it. Of course, now they're not win. I, I think Mad Men must be winning. You know, at, in the awards. I totally scratched myself. I'm sorry, B man. I was like, I was like flailing my arms around here. See, this is why it's awesome in video and not in audio. You didn't, if you listen to the audio version, you missed me flailing my arms like an idiot over here and scratching myself on the uh, super astoundingly sharp corner here. Kind of odd on the microphone. I just totally scratched. Yeah, myself but up. Brian, I'm sad about it right see, now. See, that's I'm if, sad about but, that, and I'm sad about breaking B man. Going away. If they watched you, they saw that. If they listen, they might have thought you got in a fight with ninjas. So, oh, crap. That's a good point. That's what I'm saying. Man, that is better. Theater of the mind, B man. All have right. faith in the viewer uh, or so, listener. Now, all that is fantastic. That is pretty good. But Austin Powers 4 is happening. Okay, now this is kind of funny because I just rewatched Austin Powers 3 because it was like on Netflix and Angela wanted to watch something funny and it has lots of colors, so oh, yeah. Abby liked it. She wanted to watch something funny. Yeah, it was. and yet you watched Austin she Powers. She loves Mike Myers, dude. Yeah, she loves. All right, I gotta, I gotta ask you. Because you know all the characters that he does are in that movie, and that's like it. That is all. And she likes all of them. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Man? Does she like the Love Guru? Uh, no, she doesn't. Really? Because I love the Love Guru. I don't think she's ever seen it though. No, I don't know if I like it or not. I, I will tell remember. you this though. Uh, it's. It's got its moments. It, 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 it's not bad. It's got its moments that are not too bad. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. I, I, I chuckled a couple of times rewatching yeah. it. And, uh, you know, the guy loves gold and those kinds of gags that, you know, are kind of like his dad is funny. His dad is funny. His, I, his dad is played by the famous British actor. I just, I'm bl blanking on his name right now, Nigel something. But uh, he, uh, I think. <laughs> That's the character name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ni Nigel Powers? Is that no, what? No, no. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh. yeah, yeah. It's, it's Michael Caine. No, let's look it up. Michael Caine? Okay. Well, anyways, uh, really funny. And they build and play on some really funny dad issues and that are, are that play at a couple of levels. I'm just saying. I'm no, just saying. It, is, it isn't bad, but they're making a fourth movie, which, you know, I think people are going to be kind of excited about. Alfred. That's what I was He plays Alfred. The guy that plays Alfred was his dad in Austin Powers. The guy that plays Alfred. Hey, Michael Caine? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's that's you watch Austin Powers three and you're like, dude, who's Austin Powers is dead? It's Alfred, the guy that played Alfred in the Batman. <laughs> I I would be. I wish there was some way to vote. I bet more people associate him as the guy that played Alfred in the new Batman than th th whatever his name is. Because I've already forgotten what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> you need another beer. Yeah, I All do. Right, so they're making another Austin Powers movie. There's no word on who's directing it or anything like See, that. See, look how much mileage we got out of that, you but, jerk. But on honestly, you know, who cares? You love it. You're gonna see it. Don't lie. Oh, wait a minute. I just... Yeah, you do the next one. I just all right. accidentally closed well, the thing. Well, I thought this is actually not all of that... Uh, and I, You know, I will tell you, Ain't It Cool News does not have the longest version. I don't know what's up with this. Usually Ain't It Cool's got the hookup. But uh, but uh, I think it was comic book... Somebody else has a bigger scoop on this. But anyways, we've gotten the synopsis of... Uh, not that screen, Chris. We got the synopsis of Superman, the new Superman Man of Steel movie. Yeah, we do. And we just thought we'd go ahead and talk about this because this is not spoiler horrific at not all. not interesting. Literally, hold on. I'm going to read you the plot synopsis of the new Superman movie. Now, try and follow along. It gets some twists and turns. <laughs> and I quote... In the pantheon of superheroes, Superman is the most recognized and revered character of all time. Oh, man, you just... I know, man, I me. apologize. Stop doing that. Clark Kent, also known as Cal el is a young 20-something journalist who feels alienated by powers beyond anyone's imagination. Transported to Earth years ago from Krypton, an advanced alien planet, Clark struggles with the ultimate question, why am I here? Shaped by the values of his adopted parents, Martha and John, Clark soon discovers that having super abilities means making very difficult decisions. But when the world needs stability the most, it comes under attack. Will his abilities be used to maintain peace? or ultimately used to divide and conquer. Clark must become the hero known as, quote-unquote, Superman, not only to shine as the world's last beacon of hope, but protect the ones he loves. Now, 
Seriously, oh, okay. it's just a retarded summation of kind of Superman-y stuff. Yeah. Like, how is that interesting at all? This is what annoys me about it. What about the... One, the pictures we've already seen are lame looking. Uh, you know, they're getting Two, a pretty positive, uh, they're getting a pretty positive response. I don't response care on what people's responses are. It is, I've shown time and time again how wrong people are. Is that not the case? <laughs> um, that is totally the case. Second, this... Uh, this what this about is the same thing as every other Superman TV show, comic book, and I movie agree ever. With you there. I so agree. why reboot it? We just rebooted it with that exact information. <laughs> why reboot it again? We don't get a new story. <laughs> it's the same story. I'll show that on the screen. That's great. <laughs> that's, that's randomly brought play. play. <laughs> he has a picture of Play Ape, which is you know you know Planet of the Apes. You know, awesome. Uh, uh, here's the thing. All in Spanish, by the way. <laughs> it's great. They're hoping to reestablish the franchise and then launch off from here. Re they reestablish them every four years. I agree. Dude, this is, this is my problem. And here's... They reestablish him every four years. Superman always wins. Superman is undefeatable. This is my... So who cares? This is my issue. I just don't care. Here's... Dude. Dude. I want to, tell, I want to hear everything you have to say. This now. is my problem with the new Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Yeah. Why? It doesn't make any sense, does it? This I was going to talk about. I was going to put a link in the show notes. There's a new Batman animated series coming out that has mm -hmm. some of the more traditional, not quite, but a little more old school animation style to it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, um, it's an origin story. It's a it's a Batman wait, origin wait, wait. story. It's about the death of his parents. It's about how he becomes Batman. And I just thought, you know, how many times have we seen that? Just just like 243 times, I believe. Easily. Yeah. There are so many. Like even in the original Batman TV show, mm -hmm. which come on. Was terrible. Like I love which one? It. The, which the, one? The, the real Batman TV show, the super the good awesome. one. The good one. Yeah, the good we're one. Talking, we're talking the 1960s. Yeah, we're powerhouse. The good one. Okay. The good one. It was terrible, right? Like it was great. It was self-aware though. But it was self-aware and it was cheesy. But that doesn't make it, was, it terrible when it's self-aware. But you know what I'm saying though. Like, no. It was like I don't know what you're saying. All right, let me backtrack. Because I'm saying it was. Do you a, remember, Chris? Do you remember the 1960s Batman TV show? I do. Wasn't it awesome? That was a great Batman right, so here's show. Here's the thing. Now, they only did the origin story like once. I don't even remember it. I, I don't remember when they did it, but they had to have an event at some point. I don't think they did. I think they, they skipped just, it. They just skipped it. No kidding. Now, I think they the thing, But they had so many episodes, and they did so many cool storylines that were crazy off-the-wall storylines, like all over the place. And they didn't even start to dive into all Check of it out. crazy Check it out. Crazy. Episode 1 of the 1960s. I get it. 1960s Batman, episode one right there, and you know what it doesn't have? It doesn't have an origin story. So it goes right into a Batman it's the thing. the Riddler. Yeah, it goes right into it. Yeah. So, I, I'm not even sure that the original movie had the origin story in it. I think um, it might have referenced it. Yeah, see, they go right into it. They're just, uh, this is just a few minutes Batman's into it. Batman's getting stuff Crimes done. Robin's yeah. 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 a little Robin's bit right. gay. <laughs> but great, but great. And here's the thing. They had a low budget. I mean, they were just, like, cranking these stories out. I yeah. swear to God, they must have made one show a day. Like, they yeah, were just cranking uh, them out. And they still managed to come up with interesting stories. Season season one was 34 episodes 34. long. How many Batman movies have, have we had? How many Superman movies do we have back-to-back? -back? We get one. It's an origin story, and then we move on and remake the origin story five years later. Yeah. Because nobody can apparently write anything anymore. Yeah, I... <laughs> I, I believe that's what it is, is. I believe they feel like... Now, I think the flip side of the argument is is if you want to use a universe, if you want to use the the world of the universe, you got to start over. It's chat like, room makes a great point. With Peregrine his, Falcon in the chat room says, that's because people in the 60s weren't effing stupid. They already knew Batman's origin story. Hmm. Maybe we are so dumb nowadays that we instantly forget how Batman became Batman. Now, you see, I believe this is part of the... Uh, Bruce who? I believe this is Bruce part of... Wayne, I've never heard of this. He sounds wealthy. I think uh, this is part of the reason why you don't like the new Star Trek movie, too, is there is... There's no point to rebooting. There is, a, there is a one side of the fence you could land on where you say, if I'm going to use this base, this Star Trek or Batman, whatever it is... It's there. If I, but I, but I want to go in a new direction... I gotta, I gotta start somewhere and then branch from there. Yeah. So you reboot, and you branch from there. And the problem is, is, is that every few years, some person in Hollywood thinks they're the one to finally crack it, so they reboot it so they can branch it. Right. That's what happens. It's not that. It's, it, it's like I think it's so done. Sad. I think it's done with intention to, to, to spawn make like awesome. Yeah. Like, like you know, movie after movie of awesome in this world. Uh, but it never works out that why way. Not, why not just sit in the same world and just be awesome? Mm, I agree. Hey, you know 
what Star Trek movie was in the same ongoing Star Trek universe that was awesome? Oh, uh, all of them. <laughs> Until JJ came along. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, so, so you could argue Nemesis was a stinker. So here, here's, here's a problem that we're up against. Right now, we have finished the news. Mm. We don't know what we're going to do for moving picture happy fun time yet. Oh, yeah. That's we right. need to come up with something. I kind of was thinking I wanted to do a James Bond movie at some point. Let's do a James Bond movie. Um, which one do you want to do? I wanted to do, I don't know. I, I don't know which one. I was, just, I was just throwing that there as a suggestion. Chat room says hackers. Hackers wouldn't be bad too. It's been a while since I've seen Hackers. Seen a, no? Yeah, it's been a long time since I saw Moonraker. Hackers. Bird Notice is good, but Mo- Moonraker wouldn't be bad. I guess I want to make sure it's something people can get to. You know, we you want know, it to be you know, actually, accessible. someone just recommended Franklin and Bash. It's one of the new like courtroom dramas. It's actually kind of funny. Oh man, I only watched like one episode of it, but I'm like, that's actually kind but of. See, funny. now we're going to new territory if we go TV show. No, nah, let's not do that. Let's, let's do. Uh, all right, so we're gonna talk about Mercury Men, but next. Next time, let's talk about. Uh, I think Moonraker is a fun idea. I, just don't know, I don't know how accessible it is for people. Well, let's let's look. Hold I on. don't know if it's on the Hold Netflix. On, you talk about something. All right. Well, I'll I'll talk start. About something. I'll introduce Netflix.com. The, well, I can't. I, if you're talking the whole time, I well, can't. You can't. No, because oh. I'll talk about the Mercury Men though. I'll introduce the Mercury Men. The mouse cursor. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So the Mercury Men was a uh, sci-fi. S Y F Y. You can just log it as me. That's fine. Okay. And uh, oh my gosh, look at all this porn you watch. It's an original. It was an original web series. Now a couple of things to kind of note about it is it's black and white one. So if you if you haven't seen it yet, be prepared for that. No, that might throw you off. But no. it is free to watch online. And uh, I you can also get it through iTunes, which then you get it in HD and doesn't have no commercials. Books. Focus but you have to pay print. like three bucks for it. So think about that. A- Anyways, it's uh, it's a ten part it's a ten part webisode series, and it takes the basic synopsis Got is, it. is it's, all right. So none of the James Bond movies are available on Watch Now except the original 1967 Casino Royale, which is kind of like um, it's like a it's like a pseudo comedy. Yeah. Uh, well, and it's not really considered Bond canon. No, it's not Bond canon. So uh, do we want to do that one? You it's do not that a Bond one? movie though. It's not a Bond movie. Yeah, well, thing. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Check we, hackers. Check. Check to see if hackers, hackers is available. If hackers, we're getting a lot of people saying available. hackers. Hackers. And we hackers gotta, is on there. Let's do hackers. All right, we'll do All right, hackers. We're doing hackers. So uh, uh, you we'll, guys win. We're doing hackers. Yeah. All right. All right. So go. next week's moving picture, happy fun, mutual, happy fun, moving time mm-hmm. is hackers. And then you know what I've well, I've I've pulled people on Google Plus, and I'll probably do it again soon. Is I'll, I'll make a list, and we'll just kind of start publishing that list so people know what's coming up. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, so uh, the the, uh, the the gist you need to know before we get into it is. First of all, this is not spoiler possible because it ends on a cliffhanger, so we can't spoil it for you. So don't worry about that. Um, no, we really can't. But the the basis is here is that uh, m- beings from Mercury uh, become scared by our efforts to travel into space, and so they respond because they're older than us and they should have already had that technology, but they hadn't gotten there yet. So they yeah. respond by coming to Earth and trying to get rid of us. By literally, they they so what they do right off the bat is they find like this like this skyscraper. They find a super tall building and they want to adjust like using its magnetic polarity off of some gravitational electroniness to pull the moon to the Earth and crash the moon. Into it's the kind Earth. of a fun thing. So it, because it's a web Thank series, you, the gravity machine. Yeah, that's what they called it. Because it's a web series. It's pretty cool. They uh, they had to kind of work within budgets and stuff. So they they pretty much a lot of it takes place. At least the first half of it takes place mostly in like this one building. But it makes a lot of sense why because like the bad guys are utilizing this building to make it like as like a like a yeah. strengthening rod, um, and it's got I a do very like strengthening rod. It's got like a very 1950s feel to it. Yeah, no, it's it kind of has it's supposed a to take place in the 70s though. Yeah, it's, it takes place in the 70s. Um, you but know. I, I swear it felt it felt very 19. I just I felt very uh, and that's like the whole point. It felt it felt a little Twilight Zoney uh, for a minute, and then it gets a little actiony, and then it's a little Twilight Zoney again. Which there is, is cool. some awkward slowness. Like, I, I didn't think so. I, I, really? I, I really loved the pacing of it. Like, there was like some moments where I just felt like the scenes where like the guys getting choked was just so stretched out. I liked those. <laughs> See, I dug those. I, <sighs> you didn't right. feel like the the uh, the the government stooges uh, awkward comedy from time to time was just sort of. I mean, it was good, but it was just like everybody else was so serious, and every now and then you'd have like a funny moment. I thought, and this is, I may take flack for this. I loved absolutely every second of it from beginning to end. Really? Yeah. I loved the opening 
credit. I loved the random moments. I loved the office dude just hanging out. I loved. Uh, I loved. You the like light, the main character? I loved the light men walking around shooting people. I loved now the light men. It's crazy. There are some scenes in it, and you can see this in the first and second episodes. This doesn't give anything away. Where the light guys will literally be looking at this office dude. The light guys were very, very, and very cool. The light guys were awesome, and obviously, you know, they're just like hugely tall people that just are all white, mm-hmm. and they're about to shoot the office dude. And it almost seems like for no reason the light guys are just dilly dallying about doing it. And I very loved much like it. that. I loved it because then they cut back to the the guy, this office dude, who's like, you know, in his like, you know, late forties, early fifties. He's just sitting there. Literally has this look on his face like, why the F have yeah. you shot me? Yeah. And I loved it. Like, I loved all of it. The 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 main hero guy. He kind of had like a... Uh, uh, Cap- Captain Tomorrow, basically. Well, he was, yeah, his name was uh, something Jaeger. Jack. John, Jack Yeager. Jack Yeager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I liked him. He was just fine. But I, I liked more, I liked the office worker dude. I liked the, the random yeah. office worker dude because yeah. I love... I love the stories where they take here's just an a, average guy. There's the white, they, the uh, light walker guys. Here's a shot of it. So the reason why they're light is because the gravity on Mercury is supposed to be so strong that it smashes light together and made them into living beings. Right. That's kind of a cool idea. It's totally cool. Yeah. It's way cool. And they shoot lightning. And the, uh, it's a very moody looking, but it's not like moody, depressing looking. It's just like moody Twilight Zone looking. So it makes you feel reminiscent for back when TV actually had cool science fiction yeah. and fantasy stories. Because nowadays we really don't have that most of the time. And this is actually really cool. I mean, it's obviously low budget. In mm-hmm. fact, they shot it for 10000 bucks. Wow, that's the respectable. The whole thing cost 10000 is... bucks, and it was filmed, I think, in one building like in Pittsburgh or something like that. It was some random story. I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, dude, I've never heard of this this director before. But The what visuals are really good. Bucks, the visuals are some of the best visuals you'll see. Awesome, right? Yeah. They look great. Yeah. I thought it was great. And really, it, it was funny. It was it was moody. It was sci-fi. It was funky. It was it was an adventure serial tale in the best sense of the world. It and was it, like it was like watching Buck Rogers. Except and it pulls fun elements different. from like the uh, the NASA moonwalks, yeah. and it pulls elements from like all these different little areas of history. It takes place in 1976, but it's that's that, like the, that world is still fresh enough since the moonwalks and stuff like that, and the NASA programs that it all really works really well. And um, <clears throat> there's a good little rapport built up between the main character and the main hero. Yeah. And at the end, uh, there's like a little little thing that he does that kind of is a nod to the viewers who've been paying attention. And then it ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah, it ends on a cliffhanger. It doesn't? Yeah, it's like, oh, okay. Hopefully, there's more because yeah. uh, I want to see more. This came out last month, I think, at the end of last month. Yeah. So, so we got a while to wait, I'm sure. But you know, ten episodes are up for free. But and this was great. I would love to see Siffy pick this up as an actual show. Yeah. I, I would love to see, even if it's just a half hour long show, a half hour weekly or something, that would be stellarly fun. This is a, this is the Mercury Men. Mm-hmm. This is a really, really great show. It's definitely worth watching. It's free on their website. The downside is the, the quality of the embedded video over on Siffy.com is, uh, it could be better, but it's very watchable. They have ads before each episode, and each episode is only about six to eight, six to nine minutes long. So you're going to be watching a lot of ads to get oh, through Oh, dude, check all that. Them. Avatar, Avatar Continuum in our chat room has made uh, Mercury Men uh, avatars. That's really cool oh. for like your forum posts. Way to go, Avatar, dude. Yeah, uh, I will say if you're, if you're an iTunes user, you might consider buying it from iTunes because then you get it. You get it HD, yeah. and you get it commercial-free, and you get it continuous. But if you want to watch it for free, just watch it on the web. But yeah, I, so I watch it through their website because I wanted to get the full you know, the full experience and whatnot. I thought, you know what? For a minute, I'm like, I'm going to go find some illicit means to procure me some Mercury Man. Did you find it? No, I didn't even look. Oh, okay. Then I eventually, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch this exactly how Siffy wants me to watch it. And it was really good. And so that's my only knock against it is the medium of distribution even though I feel like uh, this totally works well, for a webisode, I just feel like Siffy did it kind of lame where their ads at the beginning was the same ad. This is this was actually yeah. my biggest problem. Yeah. Every episode, you got to watch 10 episodes. And it's, every episode is the same Allstate, Allstate insurance ad. Insurance yeah. ad. Yeah. And I don't <laughs> care that President Palmer from 24 <laughs> wants me to buy Allstate No, that Allstate does make insurance. it a little better, though. But I don't care. Yeah. I already have insurance. Um, I'm not switching. So I thought about switching, and then you told me to ten times in a row, and now I'm not interested. So you, you know, one of the things that I did recently when I rolled out that new HTML5 player for Jupiter Broadcasting is I mm. turned off ads. That's sweet. And it 
you know, it sucks for ad revenue, but it's, it's because it's like it is. It's super obnoxious. It's super obnoxious, and especially when it's like a, a six minute clip. Because a few of these episodes are six minutes long, which is totally awesome. It reminds me, honestly, I'm Very, a, I'm a sucker for this stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know me. Like, yeah. uh, so kind of reminds early, me of Mac Murphy a little bit. Yeah, early on in the days of Jupiter Broadcasting, we did a show called Mac Murphy PI. That was like this 1920s. Like you're in a you're 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 a private investigator that's in downtown like Seattle robots and and uh, all sorts of st- crazy stuffs going on and it's it's very similar in a lot of ways um, but it's you know an audio show mm-hmm. but that show was only like five minutes long per episode and and I I love that pulp serial feel how obnoxious I love though. it though I mean I, I love it it just the problem is sticking with so the ads. Many ads yeah 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 and the other thing that that struck me about this is there's some things I love. I love adventure tales. Mm-hmm. I love sci-fi. Yeah. I love aliens coming in from space. I like average guys becoming heroes. I like things being in black and white. And I thought, this is an awful lot like my comic book. In those ways. In those I ways. Just, I'm just telling, I just, I just saying like I was, re- I was watching through this. I'm like, I'm really enjoying this. And I don't know how much the average person's going to enjoy this in, in video form, you know, like I, I, I would like to think that people would love this because I think this is great. I wish they I would release stellar. I wish they would release stats on it. You know, let us That'd know. Be great. I, I would not, love to know. I would, I'd love to. I'd love to know what kind of what kind of views they get on there. Because um, yeah, it was a good. It was a good. It's a good platform. It's just the ads. Look little, they got to work that in out. The chat room down here. Uh, for those of you listen to it, you don't know what's going on. But there's a guy in the chat room. Blisk mm. hasn't even got my comic book yet. How is the comic book doing? Still pretty good. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it's doing well enough that there's definitely going to be more. Well, that's good. Which is good because I already wrote a couple more. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be really bummed out yeah. right now. Yeah. 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 But no, it's so, so yeah. There you have it. There, there you have it. Lunduke.com for the comic book. Boom. Boom. But yeah, Mercury Men. Go to Syfy, S-Y-F-Y dot com slash Mercury Men. And it is awesome. Watch it. It's great. Now, hackers, uh, I should get... Uh, I Avatar should... Continuum is asking in the chat room if he can make avatars out of my comic book. Yes, of course you can. There you go. Absolutely. There you go. Should now uh, I'm going to check to see if Hackers is available too because on Amazon because of those of you who might not have Netflix if you're Amazon Prime, you can watch it there. You stream it for free. I don't know though. Yeah, it looks video. like it instant video. Oh, All but right, you have we'll, to pay. We'll do Hackers. We'll do Hackers. Okay. You know, depending on which one you watch, uh, there's some booby. Depending on which right? one you isn't watch. Right? Isn't there booby in is, is there Angelina Jolie didn't she Is there on some editions not booby? Yeah, yeah. I didn't The I didn't TV know. version doesn't have any booby. Well, I don't want to watch the TV version. No, I'm the just, for TV I'm version. warning people, be man. I'm Do not w- watch the made for TV version. You will not see Angelina Jolie no, Booby. No. You will not. And that is the only redeeming quality of this movie. Uh, so I probably should have mentioned <laughs> this earlier in the episode, but this was Jeremy's job, but he no-showed. So I, no, I, I had to take it over, and I almost forgot that we're okay. not going to have an episode uh, next week because... It's PAX. It's PAX, and that Thursday is going to be really crazy. I think what we'll probably need to do is shoot Linux Action Show in the Jupiter Night Shot uh, spot next week. All right, so next to next Thursday. Next Thursday, we'll probably be doing Linux Action Show Linux action. instead of Jupiter at Night in this time slot, so there won't be a Jupiter at Night for the next week. You know what that makes? Huh? Ton of sense. So uh, that's so the week and next following weekend, we're going to be at uh, PAX. So there's a thread in the Jupiter Colony. If you're going to be at PAX uh, in Seattle and want to join up with us, we'd love to see ya. So you can coordinate in the Jupiter Colony thread. We would. Yeah. It would be great. I'm going to be there myself at least uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, I won't be making it Sunday. I have no idea what my schedule is going to be like. One of the days we get in early is press. Yeah. And that's the day you definitely want to be yeah, there I'll for. be there for that day. And we've, uh, I know we've got a couple of companies that want us to, you know, check out their wares and they're getting mm-hmm. special. Dude, how many emails are we getting now? Dude, it's crazy. so many emails <laughs> all day long. Oh, Brian, you totally want to come check out this game for uh, for the Wii where uh, you will play a dancing panda. I'm like, yeah. really? Yeah. What has ever made you think I want that? I no. know. Have you watched any of my stuff? Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. I know, man. I know. So there uh, you have it. I really do want to play a dancing panda, though, in a Wii. You could. Yeah. You probably could do yeah, that. I, I do probably have that, that game. Yeah, I really want that. I will say, uh, so a lot, my last mention here for the Samuel Adams Summer Ale is really good. <laughs> Wasn't it good last week, too? Yeah. Yeah. But it was still good. This water is something else, though. This is something else. Oh, uh, you know, if you guys uh, are watching this show, you might like Jupiter Broadcasting shows in general. we got lots of shows going on right now. This this coming episode of Linux Action Show is kind of exciting. It's the uh, it's Linux's twentieth birthday, so we're gonna do something. I don't know what. Yeah. I don't know what we're gonna do. 
But we're gonna do something. That's gonna be this, this, that, this Sunday. That's at JupiterBroadcasting.com. Yep. Uh, we do uh, we do TechSnap, mm -hmm. which is really nerdy and all about security and stuff, mm -hmm. which is pretty exciting right now because every other day some big giant website gets hacked into. That's true. And that's a lot of fun because you're like, oh ha ha ha, that those stupid company I didn't like anyway. And boy, if we don't go into the details on that stuff, I tell you what. Do you? We did a big Q and A episode today, so that'll be coming out Friday morning. Totally right. Um, all kinds of stuff like getting going on websites and all kinds of crazy stuff. Totally rad. And Jupiter Files is going on every Monday. Mm -hmm. Last Monday, we talked about orange goo. Yeah. That turned out to be eggs. Yeah. Of an unknown crustacean All species. All over a city in Alaska. from the damn sky. And awesome. Uh, so it's like the city in Alaska gets covered in orange goo. Totally covered. And that So that was in London like Files. Like on the roofs. That was in Jupiter Files, that was which Jupiter is Files. already out on Monday. It was already out. It was last Monday. Yep. We got a new episode coming up this Monday. Not going to tell you what's, what we're talking about. Significantly weirder than orange goo. We uh we kind of weirder. We kind of made a big stink in our latest episode of Stoked. Oh yeah, yeah. What's we kind of did. Well, we didn't really mean to, but uh, so Cryptic announced that they're pushing the next feature episode content back to October, along with uh, a couple other features that were actually originally planned with the last season update they just did. Makes sense. And so Jeremy and I, Jeremy and I talked we'll about it and said, you know, we were disappointed and kind of went in and said, you know, if you don't like it, cancel your subscription. That kind of stuff. Well, uh oh. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess that generated a bit of a buzz, but. You know, it is what it is. So. Whoa. Yeah. You're ruffling feathers. I guess. We didn't mean to. We just Man. thought, you know, if people weren't happy, they should just resub when the game has what they want. Well, yeah, that makes that makes sense. You know, if you're not if you're not enjoying playing it for yeah. a few months, stop paying for a few months and then yeah. come back to the game. Like for me, I'm a lifetime. It's already the game's already free for me. Matter. I don't care. Yeah. But if you're paying monthly, it would make sense. Not don't keep paying until until you want to play. And Damn. you play games for fun. Damn. Well, I don't know. I don't think it's that. You're con hardcore, man. I don't know. Now, and, and and that was that was some pretty hardcore stuff. You guys, yeah. you guys were laying down the law. You're like, you're no. like, listen, Star Trek That's Online. This is. is what it is. If you want to hear more of people lay down the law, definitely tune into this next Link's action show because uh, there's news. Oh yeah. my god. Hewlett Packard is destroying personal computers and phones and everything. So we're going to be talking about that. Yeah. We'll probably have opinions and probably trash talk something. Probably. I'm actually Good impressed else. we got through this whole episode and didn't bring it up because we're both fuming That's about it. That's all I want to talk about. Yeah. That's all I want to talk about. For mm -hmm. those of you who don't know what I do, I make a piece of software that makes software. One of the big deals I'm making is the next version makes software for WebOS, which is owned by HP, which HP earlier today killed. Kind of sucks. I just finished making yeah. that support. Like literally. To make those, literally. In the... The, the last, like, week, yeah. it was finished. That sucks, man. Like, golden, bug-tested, ready to go. So now, I just... And then I didn't... So that's some time spent. So then, my brain has to reboot. Yeah. I'm not sure how long that's going to take. <laughs> but that I was upset. Yeah. So I figure I'll be really upset come Sunday, so that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that should be fun to tune into. So, uh, Linux Action Show is live uh, at JB Live. All these are jblive.tv. Linux Action Show, 10 a.m. Pacific on Sunday. Most days. Yeah, except Most for weeks. Yeah, except for the following. This, this coming week, yes. Yeah. The week after, right. it'll be on Thursdays. Yeah. Which is when or that Super Nice Live. That's confusing. Which is this show. All right. I think that's probably everything we have, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I could talk about. I, I still want to talk about my escape from America plan, and uh, yeah. I want to talk about Ron Paul at some point. And um, you know what's funny? I uh, I mm. love escaping from America. Yeah. I got. Yeah. I have my own escape from America plan. Yeah. And uh, I'm also a big supporter of Ron Paul. So those topics. I, I love I know, those topics. I know. We hey, gotta dive you into know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this Escape from America plan. I'm even looking at the long-term forecast, and I gotta tell you, the Washington long-term forecast for December is a bad winter. So if you want to escape from America before... <laughs> Do it before December. I'm just saying, the summertime and maybe early fall is your best window to escape from America if you live in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, we have a limited I'm, amount of time to talk about it, because I might not be here. I'm not going to make it out in time. I'm going to be here for the long, hard winter. That's true. Maybe next summer. We're I'll just going to have to hunk, we're gonna have to hunker down and just make some shows. Here's the thing, though, Chris. Hmm. If I escape from America, yeah. I really don't have the right to whine and complain and bitch about who gets elected president. Who cares? Screw them. You're not here anymore. Yeah, but I really like doing that. That's true. Yeah, it's really I, good. You know, I've, I've noticed that it never stops anybody else in any other country. That's true. Really so you just it. become one of those guys. Well, here's, the, here's the thing. I have, since I became 18 years old, yeah. voted in, in every election. Sure. Every big official, Senate, 
or president or Congress right. that I have voted for has always lost. <laughs> there has never been one time that I have voted for someone who has won, which means I have massive, massive, I, in my opinion, cred for bitching. Because well, literally, that's true. I am <laughs> never, never, never does anyone in government I vote for get in office. Well, it never happens. Well, uh, everyone that's there is see, there because I fought against. I'll them. tell you. See, I think you you got the wrong frame of mind. Hmm. Because I'm talking about collapse. I'm talking about collapse, and you gotta get the F out of here. You don't care who you're voting for when there's a collapse. But it's still fun. Well, that's true. Yeah. But then I just get involved in some other country. I bet they got horrible politics, too. Oh, that's a good point. Bob's your uncle. That's what I hear. Problem solved. Corruption's Bob's everywhere. Bob's your uncle. All right, everybody. Never fear. Corruption's everywhere. We are totally done with this episode now because I don't know what we're talking about. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And you're gonna tune in next week and enjoy it an awful lot. Boom. <laughs>